Well, as China's Golden Week draws to a close, big money has been spent during the eight-day holiday. For more analysis, we're joined by William Lee, chief economist of the Milken Institute here in Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. So what's your take on these latest consumption figures coming out of China? Well, the, the tourism uh, has actually been very exciting during this period. It's traditionally a very high tourism period. But, you know, this year is 120 million fewer tours than we had last year because people still haven't gotten back to their normal spending and traveling patterns. Uh, this year, a lot of international travel has been restricted. But even with the increase in domestic uh, travel, there's been much less. In fact, the average tourist this year has spent less than about 12 percent less than it did, did last year. So right now, the numbers seem to show that consumption is coming back online, but it hasn't quite made it yet. So let's break down some of the highlights from the consumption during this Golden Week holiday. Which sectors performed the best and which are still struggling with headwinds? Well, it seems as though the luxury goods are doing quite well because the wealthy are able to buy the, the goods and services that they've always been able to buy. And this year, without international travel, a lot of the, the, the wealthy consumption has shifted over to luxury goods. One of the shortfalls, I think, is coming in the area of the uh, retail shops for this in the second and third tier cities where uh, there has been much less consumption. This year, consumption has really been a laggard. G GDP has grown fabulously in China over the last uh, uh, eight, uh, th two, three quarters. And yet, consumption has lagged. It wasn't until August that we started to see a, a rise in about half a percentage point in consumption. Year on year, for the first eight months, consumption is still down eight and a half percent. Now, you mentioned uh, luxury goods, and we saw that the latest report predicts Chinese demand for luxury goods is going to grow 30 percent this year. What are the main reasons behind the robust market there? Well, one of the reasons I just mentioned, which is the substitution away from international travel. A lot of the, the, the wealthy would go uh, buy their luxury goods uh, in Paris or Rome. Uh, and this year, they're restricted in their international travel, so a lot of the luxury good purchases are being made domestically. Also, a lot of the, 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 the people with pent-up demand for just wanting to get out uh, because they're just so tired of being locked in, uh, start to spend, and, and the spending that people seem to go toward would be luxury goods. Uh, traditionally, there's also been large purchases in um, property, but this year, property purchases seem to also be soft, except for in the major cities like Beijing. Now, this is quite a test because this is the longest uninterrupted break since the viral outbreak, and we saw that people's willingness to travel and spend has increased. But how likely is this willingness to continue after the holiday? Great question. Uh, the, this pent-up demand, as I said, is expressed during this uh, Golden Week period, which has been extended by an extra day because of the Autumn Festival. What we need to see is whether the, the government support policies will be able to kick in and reassure uh, people that they really have a safety blanket under them, that the safety net is secure so that if they actually start spending, uh, the economy, if it were to falter, there's a safety net there to catch them. So the, the tax policies and the, the, the social safety net spending has to be put in place and, and, and convincingly so, so that people will start to spend uh, more than they have up to till now. And we did see that restaurant bookings surged during the Golden Week. How much did that help try and offset some of the losses that the catering industry as a whole has been suffering? Well, that's the one sector, the face-to-face, -face, uh, people-facing uh, sector like tourism, hospitality, that's been hurt uh, tremendously. Uh, you know, that, that is traditionally the place where people find their first jobs. And so what it's really a problem for would be the unemployment uh, situation for people coming out of school. People no longer are able to resort to the hospitality and, 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 um, and retail industry as a place of entry for their first jobs. And that's put a lot of pressure on the job market. Now, we might see more people going into the retail industry as we look ahead to things like Singles Day shopping events. How do you see that impacting China's domestic consumption? Will it get another push? I think one of the, the great innovations has been online shopping around the world. And, and certainly, Singles Day has been at the forefront, just like Amazon's uh, Prime Day has been uh, uh, for the United States. But in a sense, it's not so good for employment because it, it pushes the consumption online and away from the retail stores and traveling to the, the local uh, uh, stores, specialty stores, which have been traditional places of uh, small business employment. And as we look at Amazon's Prime Day, we know that they had to move it, and now it's going to be just a few days ahead of Singles Day. What's your outlook for this year's sales volume? 
it seems as though there's a huge pent up demand here in the United States as well. And, and for the same reason as in China, people are locked up and unable to really express the consumption through travel and, and through services and through people facing activities like going out to restaurants and, and sports activity. So we're expecting a very successful, very strong spending for Singles Day and for Prime Day for Amazon. All right. Always good to see you. William Lee, their chief economist of the Milken Institute.